Hello and welcome to Eco Farms. This is episode 28. And as you can see, we're starting off by buying a new piece of equipment. It's going to be one of the first pieces of equipment that we are buying for quite a while and not leasing. So we came to buy a plow. We're going to use the 712 John Deere mulch tiller. I have used it on a lease before and it's worked pretty well behind the the Hurleyman's does require 135 uh, 30 horsepower we've got 135 but I know it does work so thought we'd get that thought it's also now that we're starting to make a little bit of money time for us to buy our own equipment not all of it of course but as we go along of course because we're using fairly small pieces of equipment I don't think that we're going to be having to spend fortunes on uh, our equipment but it's still going to be money of course so I bought this particularly because we need to plow up the potato field the field that we had the slight disaster with when we were with our potato crop we're still going to do potato and sugar beet um, just going to do them on squarer fields so that they're easier to harvest. This one here we'll put to um, most probably barley or something like that. Yeah, as you can see it works pretty well. It's not a massive width but then again we are limited with the size of equipment you can pull, particularly on a job like this. We've gone for the tiller rather than the fuller plow just because we can cover a slightly wider distance and uh, it doesn't require quite as much horsepower as some of the plows. Yeah, so we're still in September and uh, this episode is just going to be pretty much about finishing off the fields that uh, we have started plus planting this field and the field directly behind us with um, what are you going to plant? Barley! <laughs> yeah, with barley so because it's pretty much something that you've seen all the time um, I'm going to sort of jump around a little bit between the jobs. We're going to be using a lot of local workers of course during the course of finishing off this. It's the only way we can really get through all the work that needs to be done. Our eco farm is now getting to the size where um, there are lots of things to do in a fairly short amount of time because of the seasons basically you know um, getting the getting the fields worked I don't want to leave it all for the spring there will be some fields that we will most probably be working in the in the spring particularly the sunflower and the which must most probably I think the sunflower is due to be harvested next month was it the month after next month we were September October yes and then November is the corn the two corn fields I think we're gonna have to well, I don't know we'll see we'll see whether between the sunflower the sunflower will be for the oils for the pig and the corn will be for the basic food so I think we're gonna have to inc increase corn production um, I mean, we're doing a lot of barley, we did a lot of wheat, but that's um, got to cover the the pigs and the chickens. So we're still going to be doing quite a bit more of those two crops to cover those two sources of income as such. And of course, every, anything that's left over and bits and pieces when we feed the chickens um, will go into the flour mill to made into noodles and um, 
and bread, of course. <laughs> Once we threw once we through this little busy period going into winter we'll start having a look at some new options around the farm. Hopefully by then we've got a um, little bit of money saved we can we've still got the the field um, where we've got the pick your own orchards on. We've got some space available there to be utilized which I think I'll put to corn so we'll probably work on that in the in the early winter months and springtime of course yeah, so the winter months will be fairly quiet certainly not as hectic as we have been in this this month just showing a little bit more of the ploughing here because of this strange field. I found it a little bit difficult to work out exactly how to do it as efficiently as possible. So I decided to do it this way and then we end up with pretty much a three-quarter circle that we can plough around because of the big island over there. I thought I was being clever when I made this field. I thought, oh, potatoes, you know, we're not going to, they yield a lot, um, so we're not going to need a huge, huge field. And of course, we don't want to move any of the trees and rocky outcrops and that type of thing because of our eco principles as such. So, um, Thought, oh, well, that'll be this will be ideal, but uh, it became a major problem. Well, it's probably uh, not a major problem because probably still work, but um, I don't think it'll be too difficult to harvest with a harvester in here. But I did find it quite difficult with the potato harvesting equipment. So we'll, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a little bit on, we'll adjust our. Our, um, our method of well no we'll just <laughs> the our thoughts on where to plant potatoes lost my train of thought there so we'll use sort of square or rectangular fields just so that it makes it easier to to work the fairly clumbersome potato harvester I haven't really looked in the mods to see if there's anything that works a little bit better than... So we just used the standard piece of equipment, so maybe we'll look at that in the, in, before the next harvest, potato harvest. We do, I mean, the size that we're going to harvest doesn't warrant the big potato harvesting machine. I don't think uh, the... Uh, you know, unless we make huge amounts of money, but... That'll make short work of the size of fields that we're going to be doing. But uh, yeah, I don't think that that would be feasible. And I don't think anybody would do it. Secretly in my mind, I'm trying to convince myself that that's the way to go. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so this is, this is working out fairly well this way. I mean, plowing up a field is always a relatively slow job, so we're working at a reasonable rate for for plowing. We've still got a. got to roll most of the fields as well after we've the two fields that we've really planted and then uh, so we've got to plant this field and the field to the top left of us here got to get that done in September and then we'll be 
pretty much up to date. We've still got the fields, um, the three fields at the top of the farm that uh, I think we had wheat in them that uh, still need to be cultivated, I think, and I don't think we'll, I think we'll, I'm not sure, I don't think we'll plant this this season, but we'll see. Certainly we won't be doing it in this, in this episode and in uh, September, because we We've still got some time in September, but uh, we'll we'll definitely do something with the even if it's just cultivating them in the next month, and then our field work should be finished for the year. Go into the winter months, and then we'll be into spring where it'll be pretty much start all over again. It's taken a bit of a while to do this field. But it shouldn't be too much longer before we finished. Yeah, I think I was mentioning in the last episode um, whether we should be just cl clearing a little bit of space around around each field with any potential trees. Still haven't made made up my mind on that that score yet. Um, especially now as we're getting bigger, I think maybe if we if we still. Uh, uh, I really don't know. I'm really reluctant to do it. I think, uh, and I'm leaning towards towards actually just leaving them up and then having to work around it because that's the premise of the whole the whole premise of this operation, really, unless it's absolutely necessary. If it's just because a plough gets stuck, then so be it. We'll have to manually move around that if the workers can't can't handle it. We we'll have to deal with it as we go along. I think that's that's the way we're going to do it. Actually, yeah, that's the way we're going to do it. Because I kind of like the way that the working the fields between the between the trees it makes for some interesting shapes. And we can still make some easily workable fields as well. Just finish off this last little bit and then that's the ploughing done. And our new piece of equipment has been well and truly baptised into the family of course. There we go, that's it then. Plow, as I said, it's always going to take a bit of time. Right, now we go on and get the, the planting done. Um, well, let's go and plant this other field first. I already worked quite a bit on this field. So we're going to be putting in barley stick with the barley for now. I think those top fields will we'll try and get a uh, 
a grain crop into as well. This planter has been served as well. It's not planter, the seed, I should say. Yeah, once we finished uh, working on that um, that bottom field, we'll have to start thinking about um, buying up some more land. So at this point in time, we still know when you're self-sufficient on um, pig food. I think in the next month we should be able to have some pigs, some fully grown pigs um, ready for sale so we should start start getting income if not next month the month after from the pigs and then we should be able to turn that over every few months We'll just show a little bit more of this and then we'll jump cut to the end of the planting of this field. So even this field it looks it would be fairly workable but it's it's not running north and south as such. It'll help if we put the uh, Cedar down, if we lowered it. <laughs> yeah, so this whole um, eco farm is pretty much becoming a conundrum on how do we feed the pigs? That's kind of what's making it quite interesting for me. Of course, it's not a overnight fix. When I say how do we feed the pigs, of course we can just buy in, which is kind of what we're doing now, but um, we do want to be as self-sufficient as possible with that. Right, I think we'll get a work on to finishing off this field and we've got to start thinking about um, uh, our roller problem. I don't know if you recall a couple of episodes ago we were rolling the fields and the rollers that we're using were just too heavy for the for the Hurleyman. So I've found this Matador 6105 and I I think I have in the past used this roller behind a Hurleyman. I'm pretty confident it only needs 80 horsepower. Um, it was more the weight of the other one. We were able to pull a bit. The weight was just too much on the hill. So we'll, we'll buy that. We'll sell off the, uh, the other roller. And then we'll give this one a go first and see if it uh, see how it works. Oops, gone too far back. We can set it up on the uh, it does fold up as well. Yeah, so it should be easy to get through spaces. We don't need to fold it up for now. So we're a few fields that need to be rolled. Get started on this one here. Let's see if we can get a worker going on this as well. Yep, we did. 
bit of work on there. We're just about finished. Just taken over from the work on this field now, and uh, we're going to be jumping around between them a lot because um, they are processes that you've seen quite a bit. So we've got that field done. We're going to start planting up this strange field again. <laughs> And we can still stick with the with the barley for here. We might need to do we need I think we should have enough seed to finish off here. I think we'll kind of do this more or less the same way that we we did the ploughing. We'll do a outer headland and then did the inner head headland just about finished now doing our three-quarter circles then we'll just need to touch up little bits here and there Let's see a little, few little spots where I've missed Yeah, we'll see because I mean the this area may be used for expansion of the farm buildings eventually. I've got to start thinking about putting up a, a few more sheds. Maybe um, start looking a few more little production units of different things once we've sorted out our pig feet conundrum well in fact while we're doing that we will, we will have to start thinking we'll we'll start working it out during the winter what we want to do maybe get some small production units going up and down at going at, going up to um, Increase the variety of goods that we can supply to the to the town. I'm just going to go around and fix up these little bits and pieces that we that we missed. A little bit there. That was just about it. Well, what do you do? Don't want to leave that behind. Just back on the on the roller. The worker did finish a lot of it, so just tidying up a bit. So this is probably our biggest field at the moment, and it made fairly short work with it. It's a little bit difficult to tell, but the um, it should be going straight. Looks like it was going straight. So, so I think uh, uh, yeah, I think it was a good move to change this. It's the only thing when we're using coarse play is that uh, we do have to tidy up the corners a little bit. Sometimes it's um, it's a bit of an exercise in whether it's worth tidying them up. But on this field, there was quite a bit of stuff that was left un undone because of the nature of the shapes of the fields again. There we go. That's that sorted out. Go and get the 
bottom ones rolled as well. Start with the bottom one here. Oh, let's look at a, a cedar planted uh, uh, sitting on this field. Yeah, so we've rolled both those fields, we're just finishing off the the strange fields or the three quarter circle planting field, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Uh, the ex potato field. Just tidying up little bits and pieces there. So that's all the fields done for this month. And I think that's where we're going to end this episode. I know it's been a ra rather sort of mundane episode, but uh, we have to get these done. I do want to show you pretty much most of the stuff that we're doing even if we don't show you the full the full operation. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio!